We are live. What up, what up? We are about to go. Well, we already live. Oh, there we go. Mm. What's up? Appreciate everybody for being on time. And I apologize for taking up your Saturday, but schedule was kind of crazy. We had to get it in somehow. So once Greg requests, we'll get popping. There we go. There we go. Greg, what's good, brother? Hey, hold on. I'm still connecting. Okay, let's get that Wi-Fi popping. Let's get it going on. There we go. Are you good? I am good, man. How are you? I'm good, man. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give everyone maybe a couple more minutes to get okay. to get on because I know it's Saturday. People running around. Um, for those that are on right now, shout out where you at? Like where, where, where y'all lo- where y'all coming from? Where y'all at? Um, I'm located mm-hmm. in Atlanta. If you, for you, for those that didn't know, we made that move from LA. Uh, wifey is on. <laughs> she in the bathroom right now. Shout doing out to the lady of the house. <laughs> yep. Shout out to Mimi. What's up, Cradle Queen? Uh, JDS Crafts Corner from New York. Okay, we got New York in here. Maryland in the house. Maryland. <laughs> My baby said bathroom. Man, that's not a city, baby. <laughs> <laughs> South Carolina, ATL. Okay, we got another ATL, New Orleans. All right, let's go. This is going to be a good show. I'm excited. I'm excited. Man, man, the one thing about Dope Men So, for those that are taking part as the audience, um, I'd be just as excited and, you know what I'm saying, in tune with the conversations that, that we'd be having with Dope Men So, because it's just amazing how people come across this craft, you know, and what they do after, you know. So, yeah, we've got Florida, Brooklyn, Brooklyn, what's up? And shout out to oh. uh, my friends that I see on here as, as well. Yeah, shout them out, man. You see your friends, yeah. man? Say what's uh, up? I see Joseph. He's from Greensboro, North Carolina. What's okay. going on, bro? Put this TV on mute. All right, it is four oh three. We gonna get to it. Okay. Um, what's up, everybody? Thank you for another um, for t- participating in another episode of Dope Men. So I'm your host, Norris Dancer Ford, and today's guest we have Greg Schroeder. What's up, brother? How are you, Norris? Good to I'm see good, you. I'm good, man. Here. Yeah, yeah me, uh, I'm glad you're here. I'm excited. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you have a you have a interesting story. You a man of yeah. so many talents. <laughs> <laughs> um also yeah. man you you're a man of patience man because we were supposed to do this thursday i believe mm-hmm. and yeah. then something came up i forgot so we had some meetings and stuff that um i didn't even realize on the schedule it's and then it. um yesterday something came up so today we're here on a saturday and thank you for for being here my pleasure thank you for inviting me actually um Yesterday, actually, today is perfect because I got my second vaccination shot, shot yesterday, so I was like totally out of it. So okay, <laughs> I had a chance to rest. So yeah, yeah, so, a, a day to rest. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So how how you feel today? Like did it? Like I that feel great. I, kind of, yeah, you know? I feel great. The first shot um, was pretty cool. I just had a sore arm, but the second shot, which is a Pfizer booster, not the Moderna, but the uh-huh. Pfizer booster was just as like harsh. Really? And I, would, I slept like almost all day the other day. And I had to sleep, like, you know, half a day yesterday. I was like, oh, this is not good. Okay. I'm glad this is over. So I, I'm feeling much better. Yeah. So you up, you popping, you know what I'm saying? You feeling good? Fully, fully vaccinated. I'm, I'm good to go. Boom. That's what's up, man. Yeah. Good to hear that. Yeah. Um, so for those that are not familiar with Dope Men So, obviously there's a conversation, you know what I'm saying, of men makers about fashion, sewing, design, and um also menswear you know so um for anyone that have questions um you might forget it so you can put it into the little circle at the bottom right where the question mark is put your questions in there we'll get them later um so we won't have to stroll and and miss anything you can still put them in the comments but we might might we we might miss it so you might want to put it into that circle with a question mark and we'll get to it maybe like the last 15 20 minutes or so we'll leave that open 
for questions. What's up, all right? Diamond? Diamond is in the house. <laughs> you got your peoples in here. Got my peoples in here. What's up, man? <laughs> Someone just got their Johnson and Johnson within the hour. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. So, um, once again, man, thank you for the thank you for uh, joining me on this show. And um, Greg, I, I I first I think I first noticed you in the Dope Men Soul um, group, the private Facebook group that we have, mm -hmm. and you one of the ones that that post. You know what I'm saying? So I, I appreciate you know what I'm saying for ones that are really active. Like this is what I'm working on. This one I'm working on. This one I'm working on. And you know what I'm saying? And all that different stuff. Yeah. And I was like, I was showing wifey. I'm like, man, Rob be, be doing his thing. Thank you know you, what I'm saying? He'd be mixing you. patterns and all that good stuff, man. Yeah. Um, I think the one that we really got excited about was that trench coat that you had. You had plaid on one side and, yeah. Boy, and then the so belt nice. was something crazy. Oh, I was man. like, okay. <laughs> yeah. That was that was actually inspired by Michelle Obama's coat from Oh, Bill Biden's inauguration, oh, oh. actually, especially the belt part. I was like, okay. I got to make a trench coat just because of Michelle Obama. Dope. dope so, <laughs> um, so let's get into the show, man. Um, first off, man, I want you to just just give us a brief, you know what I'm saying, rundown of like where you from, you know what I'm saying, where you currently live. Yeah. And um, I mean, basically what you do outside of sewing, you know what I'm saying? What do you do for a living, brother? Right. So I'm originally from Baltimore, Maryland, um, born and raised, um, have a pretty close knit, small type family born. In, I, I was raised in the church in the black church. Okay. Um, so in, in the reformation that I grew up in, we were all about fashion. So we talked about fashion forever. Um, so we had that knowledge about what goes well with what, you know, Sunday clothes and things of that nature. So I, I already had that foundation through the black church um i'm also a musician uh i play the keyboard and percussion i've been doing okay. that most of my life actually i'm still a working musician but due to covid you know everything stops yeah <laughs> um i'm also a songwriter I've, I've actually produced and wrote my own project um a few years ago back in 2011 called songs from greg's vault it was on digital media but it's actually on youtube now um so people can still research it if they look up my name um, um so that's pretty much it um all of my family is in ministry somehow i'm actually an ordained deacon my mother's a deacon my sister's a minister my my father's an a, a, a appointed apostle my oh, grandfather wow. okay. Yeah, my grandfather, who recently passed in December, he's an assistant pastor. My grandmother, she passed away in 2019. She was a reverend, elder. My, like, we're all in ministry somehow. The whole church. I mean, whole the whole church. family is, is, is in Yeah, it. yeah. So we're all in ministry somehow. So we all grew up in church. We have that, you know, spiritual foundation. So Got you. Definitely a good, uh, a, a good foundation for me. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Okay. That's what's up, man. So um, outside of that, you run an online shop, which is... um. Greg's Harbory uh, so shop.com? Yeah, it's called um, Greg's Haberdashery. Um, oh, Haberdashery, okay. Yeah, yeah Haberdashery, yeah. I gotcha. started it back in 2015. So a little bit further than that, about 2013, I started noticing people wearing the lapel pins. Okay. The fabric. I remember pins. that era when people was, you know what I'm saying, rocking them a little bit more yeah. than extra. Yeah. So, you know, out of nowhere, I mean, out of nowhere, I was just like, I wonder what it's like to make them out of nowhere, but not really out of nowhere because before that, um, my grandmother was a seamstress. Okay. So growing up, it was always a sewing machine. And my mother, she used to sew as well. So it was always a sewing machine in the house or some kind of sewing notion. So I've had that kind of like in, that, in my psyche anyway. So I was like, what would what it be like so I can, so I started making them. Yeah. I was uh, researching um, on YouTube. So you found a YouTube video how to make yeah. the pale pens. You, yeah. I, 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 I've attempted to do that and I made some really cool ones too. Ones you just, you just pin on. Just just pin. Right yeah. yeah. So um, I started teaching myself how to do that and I would post it online and people would, you know, give great feedback. And the more I post, the more great feedback I would get to the point where people would start asking me, 
how much is it? Like they wanted to purchase, like what? Yeah, purchase. So, so you didn't think about selling them when you was doing it? You was just I doing wasn't. it for I, a hobby. Yeah, I was just doing it as a hobby, and next thing you know, I was making for like people's proms and churches and different wow. events. So I said, um, "Is this a business? Like, what is this? Is yeah, this what is this for money?" Yeah. So, <laughs> so I decided actually to start a business and i actually took the business courses in college but it was for something else entirely actually my, my major in college was an interdisciplinary study of music and world culture okay so in that i was going to um uh, uh found some type of studio like a multi-purpose studio in which it'll be you know a recording studio then a multi-purpose center to teach young kids about uh, uh, interpersonal, uh, 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 you know, intrapersonal communication yeah. through music because music is the, the huge communicator. So I was going to do that as it relates to music. But from that knowledge of the business class that I took, I applied it to this new business, yeah. right? So um, I actually called it Boutonnaires by Greg. So that was the first name. That was the first name. That was the okay. First How, name. Why, why didn't you stick with that? So, good question. So, um, it was Boutonnaires by Greg for a while. And then, here's the thing, though. I was doing more women's lapels. Ah. Because they were so big and flowery and so pronounced and women loved them. And women got, got the pocketbook. They got the money. Yeah. So, <laughs> I decided to do that for a while. And I became a vendor. Okay. So I would go to different events, either in church or out of church, and set up my table with the women's lapels, and it was going pretty good for a while. So um, with with the, with the uh, vendor, you did this locally, or did you travel? Yeah, I, yeah, I did it locally, and then I traveled a little bit. Oh, okay. Well, what to, places did you travel outside of um, um, your city? Outside of Baltimore, you know, I traveled in the D.C. area. I traveled down to the Carolinas before to okay. the vendor to New York. That's what's New up. Jersey, Philly. So like up and down. Getting everything up. Yeah. Yeah. So um, speaking of the, the vendor part, you know, I was, you know, doing the women's lapels. And then somebody challenged me and said, and this is the name change part. Somebody had challenged me and was like, um, what else can you do? Because and this is this is part of my learning about the evolution of fashion. Yeah. Okay. Right? The evolution the the. the the waves and, and the and the, the trends right so um because he's like lapels aren't going to stick around for like a not very long so i was like that's true that's a true statement so i started to challenge myself and this is where i got to sewing okay because i wasn't what, sewing what, yet what year was this this was about um 2014 2015 okay okay 2015 is when i originally started my business Okay. The Boutonnaires by Greg. Um, and actually, three months later, my lapels were product placed in stores. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, which is an exciting. And it was like the first time doing that as well. So it was like a whole process. Tell me a little bit about that. Like, what like what stores were you in, man? Oh, so, yeah. So um, my lapels were product placed in mostly Black-owned boutiques. Okay. Okay. So what I would do is... Everywhere that I went, because I had this business mindset now, um, everywhere I went, I, I looked for an opportunity to product place my product in the store. So I would talk to the manager or the owner that was there, give him my card, tell him about my products. I even had some of my product with me yeah. that I carry everywhere I go to kind of like give them a sample or whatever. So if they were down for it, you know, they would call me and we would figure out, you know, all the logistics about that. So that's how I would, I would, okay. I was hustling. I was hustling. Cool. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so it was product placed in, I think a total of six stores in, in the local area. Okay. Um, so it was a pretty good run. And that's when I started um, teaching myself how to sew bow ties and neckties. I, I wanted to get more into more of the, of the men's accessories field. Okay, so 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 slow down, slow down a minute. Okay. Let, I, I want to get to your soul story before yeah. you get into the accessories. Let like, how did you? I know you mentioned that your grandmother used to sew. Yeah, and so you, my, you around that. So how did you get from watching that 
and actually get, get inspired to get up on the sewing machine yourself? Because did you have to sew to make the lapel pins? Or was it just, no. okay, it was no. more crap. It was more, you know, motor skills and using, okay. you know, the, the, the needle and the thread, you know, okay. pretty gotcha. much. But, um, and like I said, my grandmother always had some sort of sewing around. Um, but it wasn't until 2013, 14, uh, until that it just came on me like, boom, why don't you get a sewing machine since you're doing this? I'm like, okay. So it, it, it just came to you? It just came out of nowhere. Yeah. So, so did it, you have a sewing machine at the time? Or like what kind I of stuff you had I didn't. Get? So I went, um, when I decided to start sewing, I got a, uh, this little sewing machine on Craigslist. Oh, okay. And, yeah, I went on Craigslist and got a you know nice little... Um, you what, saw machine. What was it? Um, it's a brother. I have it right here. Oh, it's you still a, got it? Can we see yeah. it? Yeah. It's right here. It's my baby here. It's my first baby. Nice. Her name is Brunhilda. I named her Brunhilda. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, it sat on my table for months, like accumulating dust and everything, because I was so scared to, to touch it. Yeah. So I was like, Greg, you got to do this. You bought it with your money. You yeah. Got to research. So that's when I started looking on YouTube mm -hmm. to kind of understand the world of sewing, the the jargon, the terminology. Yeah. Um, I'm completely self-taught. Um, okay. And I came across one of your videos. For real, bro. I you did. didn't tell me that earlier. I did. That's okay. why I wanted to be a surprise. <laughs> All right. So, so, what I wanted to know because I was reading sewing patterns and I was like, how do you read all this? So that's, yeah. I was looking up um, how to read sewing patterns, how to take measurements. And that's when I came across your video because you had on, I don't know if anybody mentioned this video of yours, but you had on like this pretty, like a mauve or pink suit or something. It, it was like, like a mauve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pink. I know you're talking about, yeah. And you had your dreads like, on your head yeah, with everything. Crazy back then. <laughs> yeah. It was it was it was really eccentric. It's really nice. Yeah. Um, but you went to um you went to a shop. Yeah, so and that you, that was that was um how to take your suit to the tailor. Was yes. it that video? Okay, yes. I did specific. It's how to take your suit because I was trying to learn how to measure. Yeah. How to measure the body. And I came across a million bajillion um videos but i came across yours and i stuck to yours i stuck to yours because it was the most comprehensive to me got it okay and that's i wasn't at the time i wasn't so going at the time wow. wow yeah that was before i met my wife no no i had met my wife already but i don't think i was going at the time yeah yeah so i i i gravitated towards that and then i started following some more of your videos and it kind of went down the rabbit hole i was like oh this guy's pretty dope Okay. Um, and then I and then I came across Mimi's videos, and then next thing you know, I was like, "Oh wait, they're together!" I was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> okay. um, a power couple, power couple!" So it was it was good to see another brother, another face like mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. To have that conversation about you know, yeah, sewing about measurements and things like that, because pretty much since I started my business, I've been doing the same thing, trying to get that conversation going with other brothers about, you know, fabrics and putting stuff together and needles. And I want, I like having that conversation. So I'm glad that I came across your page. So, you know, you, you can kind of like normalize it. Yeah. You know? Representation is important, man. It's, it's, it's important. super important. Um, important. So what was that first project that, that you, that you cropped that machine up for? Like what motivated yeah. you to just get started? So, like I said, I started after the lapel pins, I, I, you know, leveled up a little bit more. I started teaching myself how to make bow ties and neckties. Oh, yeah. so you stayed within the, the uh, accessory the world. Yes, I did. Got it. Yeah, I stayed within that. I, I and, and me partly being a vendor, I also added other things like uh, cufflinks. I was mm. making cufflinks. I was yeah. making beaded bracelets. I was making my own body butter. Um, I was selling a lot of uh, accessories that I would make and I would get off of um, online in bulk and just sell them and be a vendor that way. Yeah, so I did that for a while and that was part of place in stores for a while as well. Yeah. The Lord. Um, and then um, I was like, oh, should I, 
make clothes now? Is it time for me to make clothes now? Because I was scared to do that because I, I was still trying to figure out how to read sewing patterns and how to cut them out. Yeah. Like I was cutting out the sewing pattern to the exact measurement and then getting a duplicate one instead of knowing how to trace underneath the line. Yeah. So it, it was like little things I was trying to like learn and trying to get down and try to, yeah. you know. So um, so how how long before you went from making the accessory and you're like, you know what, let me get into more garment sewing. Like let me get into yeah. that. Like, like right. how, what was that time frame? Yeah, so it wasn't until 2000 and the beginning of 2018. Oh, wow. Um, that I started, okay. that I really started um, using the machine to make clothes. Bro, I was you using come the long way, bro. Oh, my yeah. goodness. I was using the machine, I was using my sewing machine to make bow ties and neckties, um, but clothes, I started in 2018. Okay. And well, I, made a I made a shirt. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, I made a shirt. Um, it, and it was a size 34. And I thought that I could fit it because I, I I just didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> you didn't measure your chest or none of that? I didn't measure my chest. I just like did it and I- it Was it a button-up shirt? It was a button-up shirt. It was a it was a uh, like a black and white plaid shirt with like, no, it was a, a red and white plaid shirt with black sleeves. Okay. It was like a bowling type shirt. It was real cute. Yeah. Um, But I was like, damn, I can't even fit this. And I was like, <laughs> okay, let me figure out how to measure yeah. and how to transfer these numbers into how to transfer it to the paper yeah. to trace the right one to, for it to fit me. So I had to, I had to make that transition to figure out like, how do I transfer that and, 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 and translate it? And so I can be a, a nice fitting garment. So yeah. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Yeah, yeah, I, took, I had no clue yet. Just started sewing garments back just in 2018. I mean, that yeah. just seems like it was like just a couple of years ago. It was a couple of years yeah. ago. Yeah. So yeah. I, from then I just didn't stop. Um, I was doing uh, custom orders for other people. I was okay. So I want to talk about that. So yeah. the majority of the sewing community, you know, saying yeah. me included, my wife, I mean, a few of my friends that that's in this uh, space. Um, a lot of us don't like the sofa hire for some reason. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like trying to like get it perfect for somebody else and then get feedback from them and then like, hold on, this is my yeah. work now. You know what I'm saying? Like that whole yeah. conversation. So how did you find a love for for like, you know what I'm saying, doing custom orders like that? Money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Money. Um, but um, but I, I kind of, I, I, I did kind of make up in my mind to be that one-stop shop. Oh, okay. As a vendor, I'm like, okay, I want to be like that one-stop shop. And that's why I was selling so many items. Okay. And I was I was trying to uh, uh, do those kinds of services. I do alterations. Oh, wow. I do, I, yeah, I do custom orders as well. So and because of me learning those techniques, I was, I'm able to do alterations because that's, you're basically sewing, but you're fixing stuff. Um, so yeah, I would do alterations, custom orders. And that's an interesting process because it also challenged me to, to know the human body. Mm, yeah. To know how the human body works in relation to clothes, how yeah. they fit, how they flow. Yeah. Um, and that was a good practice for me as well, you know, because eventually I'm going to have to make for other people and not just myself. And that, okay. that's, that's, a, that's a determination that I had for me. Okay, so yeah. when you did these custom orders, did you do it for both men's wear and women's wear? Mostly men's wear. I did make a sister for my, a dress for my sister once, and okay. I have um, sold garments to women. Um, but I mean, they weren't intentionally for women, for women but I, I, you know, they bought from me. Got you, um, okay, got you. But I, but I, I, um, Personally, I just want to stick to menswear uh -huh. because there aren't enough men making men's clothing. Got you. Me. Okay. You know, I could make women's clothing. I have a whole <laughs> slew of friends, male friends, who make women's clothing. Got you. And then they, but they can make men's clothing. Gotcha. I want to be the one to make men's clothing. Got gotcha. you. Okay. Uh, and so and there, I, there are there are plenty of men designers. Yeah that manufacture, you know what I'm saying, men's wear. But yeah. like you said, it's not fair, there's not a lot of men 
making men garments and then selling it, right? That's, right. I'm, okay, all right. right. And, and you say you noticed that we used to go out as a vendor, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you would set up shop and with your men's wear stuff and you would look around and you would just, you would probably be the only guy, right? I, yeah, pretty much 95% of the time, I'm the only guy. I'm the only black guy. <laughs> I'm the only guy there. Yeah. I'm the only uh, uh, designer there. Oh, wow. Okay. You know, and it's an interesting um, thing every time I get nervous because it's like, do I fit? But then I get confident once I deem myself safe because I get to have these conversations with people. Right. You know, I'm something different than everybody else has seen. Um, and it's a tall black guy. Like, Let me see what he's about. You know, you know, and I have all these I have a beautiful setup. I have, I'm very organized. I'm yeah. very particular. Yeah. So my setup has to look a particular way. It has to, you know, be comparable to how people, how the flow of the traffic is. Yeah. You know, so I'll, I have to keep that in mind when I do my setup. Okay. So like, so when I do my setup, it's funny because, you know, men come to my table, but women come to my table too, uh -huh. sometimes with their boyfriends, sometimes with their husbands. Right. And they do, I'm like, I'm trying to have a conversation with the guy, but the girl, but the the wife or the girlfriend keeps coming. So I'm trying to. That's what my one of my purposes is try to try to make it more comfortable yeah. to talk about these things with other men, and, and take down that barrier that it's only women that that talks about this stuff. No, we. I want to talk about thread. I want to talk about polyester. Yeah. I want to talk about how you know interfacing. Flow, inter yeah, interfacing. Yeah, we thought, no, we're not, we're, we're, when I was trying to get the scheduling together, we was chopping yeah. it up and we accidentally just started talking about fashion. Yeah. And, and it's just so dope, you know what I'm saying, for someone that makes men garments, that knows about men's patterns, that know about our body and how we want stuff to fit, yeah. you know what I'm saying, and textures and all that stuff. And it's yeah, like, that's, yeah. it's just good to know, you know, because I learned a few things from you, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I mean, it's, it's just one of those things that is good to have, yeah. you know what I'm saying, someone that's represent, just 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 another representative, you know? Yeah, I love and I love your group. And I, I'm a part of a couple of other groups, but I love your group because, groups like this, because it acknowledges, it acknowledges and affirms me as a, des a, des as a designer and a creator. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I, I encourage everybody in that room, whoever posts, great. You know, because we need that. We need that yeah. encouragement because everybody starts somewhere. Right. So we need that encouragement for other men to come to the forefront and not be scared or ashamed to show their stuff. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's so true, man. Yeah. So you, you in D.C., how is the... Um, I'm in Baltimore. Oh, you're in Baltimore. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Baltimore, Maryland. My brother used to live in uh, Frederick, Maryland. How far is that from Baltimore? Frederick is probably 25 minutes outside the city. Oh, okay. That's not that bad. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. um, how was the fashion scene there, man? The fashion scene is pretty good. Um, the men's I mean, wear fashion scene. I want like, what, like what the drip look like. You know, like what they doing. <laughs> See, that's why <laughs> it's okay. It's because because most of my demographic is the church scene. So okay, church scene is is pretty dope here. You know, we're pretty good with the suits and. How Are you sure? Manage. Ain't no baggy. I, ain't no baggy of old suits. <laughs> there, there, there is that. Four buttons. There is that. There's all okay. kinds of stuff here. Oh, it's a little bit of that. Oh, okay. It's a little bit of everything here. But, um, you know, we have a Baltimore Fashion Week, you know, in the summertime, uh, I think. But I, I've been to that. But I'm usually, like in, I'm usually like in New York or, you know, Atlanta, you know, stuff like where the major happens, Philly, where the major happens are. So, yeah, that's where I get my fabric from. Anyway, so. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, so... Yeah. When it when it comes to your custom pieces, do people come to you and they have an oh, an entire idea, or do you have like some um, samples that you have? And they oh, I want that in a certain color or a certain size, or is or is it a little bit of both? Yeah, it's a little bit of everything. I get customers who know exactly what they want. They show me a picture of what they want, and I do my own version of it. Um, some people come with the blank slate. I don't know what I want, but I want something from you. You know, gotcha. Whatever you want to do with me, that's fine. Um, so it, it just depends. And I have to adjust myself for both. Okay. You know, sometimes if you don't have a particular look in mind, I look at you, I look at your style, I look at your, you know, social media, how you dress, and I offer something based upon what I think you would fit your style. 
Okay, got so you. That's a, you know that that's what a style. You know that's what yeah. you're done. You're a stylist. You know. So so know. so you're like a um like a dapper Dan kind of for like the the church community almost. <laughs> yeah, you could say. That. Okay. You could say that's that. So up, yeah, I've done garments for like pastors and preachers and nice. you know people in the clergy world as regular you know regular members of churches. So yeah. All right, man. That's what's up. Yeah. All right. Man, that was that was that was so good to know, man, because I didn't know a lot of that because obviously, you know what I'm saying, especially for these interviews, I mean, shout out to Wifey. You know, I be tr she be trying to coach me up a little bit. I'm not, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'll be, be trying to ele elevate all of my interviews, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, By yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying, sending in questions, getting some, you know what I'm saying, stuff that I can work with when I'm when I'm, you know what I'm saying, talking to everybody. But um one of the things that stuck out to me was um some of the stuff that you necessarily um didn't oh what oh, oh, was it i'm trying to think about it um oh never mind outside of that you had outside of the menswear stuff you did body butter and body oils yeah, so I... so not only did you <laughs> you was making sure that their drip was right you want to make sure you know what i'm saying you took a personal care on the body like is that yeah. something that's important to you as well that's something that's important to me as far as self-care um, okay. it's, all of this is self-care, how you dress, you know, that's self-care. So I made body butter, um, again, YouTube. And I was like, what else can I offer? You know, not just apparel, but something that, you know, that, that men can groom themselves with. So I made some body butter. Um, you can you put on your beard or put on your skin. Um, I also sell, uh, uh, body oils actually for men and women. Okay. Um, it's, it's a part of what I offer when I do my vending as well. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. So body, right. body, body care. I, I'm all, I'm a proponent for it. You got to take care of yourself, your body as well as your clothing. You know, because okay. it's a your skin. Everything is a part of your presentation. So it's good to invest in a good facial. You know, a, you know, a good body butter. You know, to y'all taking notes. They taking notes. Yeah. Okay. You <laughs> you busting it down. Okay. Yeah, because um, uh, yeah, it's it's a part. Of, it's a part. Cause clothes is a part of your. And I and I and I, really quick. I I saw this um, documentary yesterday on Netflix called Worn Stories. You got to watch it. Worn. It's called Worn W O R N Stories. Okay, Worn Stories. And it's, yeah, and it's about your sentimental connection to clothing. Mm. How clothing makes you feel, the 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 freedom, the restriction how your connection to it. So, so what I, and it's a part of my purpose. It's like, I want you to feel good in what, you know, I make because of, <laughs> of, of, of the skill of, of the care and compassion that, 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 that oozes from me every time I stitch something. Yeah. It's a story behind that. Yeah. It's a feeling behind that. It's something behind that. So when I, when you put on my garment, I want you to feel what I feel, which is, you know, I want you to feel good about how you feel about yourself. Nice man. So let's switch gears for a minute, man. I'll have a little fun real quick. So uh what's like what's what's your favorite type of fabric, bro? So yeah, um I have a few. So my favorite is sateen. Really? That is my favorite. Really? Yeah. I did not yeah. think you was gonna say that. Tell me sateen. more. Sateen is my favorite because it has such a nice finish to it. Okay. And then I'm all about stitching. I'm all about the, the, the punch of the needle in the, in okay. the fabric. And it has really a nice um, after effect of the stitching. It has a good stitching. And it just feels good on me. I think this is sat sateen. Okay. Um, I love sateen. I love denim. I love Okay. Denim. Yeah, I love denim, I love too. Oh. Yeah. Denim is like, oh, no, it just feels so, like, uh, how can I explain it? Um, it's not flimsy, it's sturdy. No, it's sturdy, and, but it's flexible. Like, I almost hear the needle going into the fabric. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, dude, a, a I'm telling you. you. Know what I'm saying? I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. It's that punching. It's that punching. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Denim is nice. And then with denim, there's a lot of top stitching in denim, especially if you're doing jeans or like a denim jacket. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So then after that, you have the thicker fabric going into, you know what I'm saying, for top right. stitching. Yeah. So and then know. once you iron it and you mail the, um, the fabric into the, the 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 threads into the fabric is just oh, it comes man. out beautiful. Yeah, I love especially the top stitching to the denim. Oh, that's yeah. Everything. Well, I what love, else? What, what else you got? What else you got for me? Um, I love working with linen. Oh, okay. I love linen. I love linen too. 
yeah, it's kind of like it, it, and it's different kinds of linen. But I, I love, I love working with dip linen because it's it's kind of like the same thing as denim, yeah. Um, with the stitching, I love that. I love all kinds of cotton, um, like working with cotton. Um, I love. I really don't like polyester, but um, <laughs> yeah, <I> got you. <laughs> because it's not like it's not. It's not ma manageable to me. Yeah. But yeah, um, I love my linens, my denim, my my sateen, my cottons. I've worked okay. and I try to work with, um, I, I like gabardine, um, and I try to work with different fabrics. I've worked with silk before. I work with leather. I love okay. working with leather. Actually, I love. Yeah, it. tell me about leather, cause leather. I mean, you have to hold your breath with that stuff, man. You just, man, let me tell you. You just can't you, rip them out. <laughs> you can't. You can't. And 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 with leather, you have to like measure twenty thousand times and then, yeah, cut and, and and work with it one time. But um, I've made a leather coat before, and it was really really dope. Um, I just have to make sure I have the right needle for it. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> yeah. So, so tell me what um what what's been um what's been one of your I guess proud uh, pieces that you've made. Wow, one of my proud pieces. And the one that makes you feel really good. Like when I wear this, it just you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Maybe um, not the way it looks. It's just the techniques that went into it, and the, and just the labor that went into it that made it just so great. Right. So. I've been on this coat vibe, right? Okay. So I actually like my coats, like the the coat that you talked about. Yeah, I mean, like that piece. Um, yeah, it was hard. I, yeah, I made a, 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 a really light turquoise um, coat, and it had like a, a, like a peach and orange, and it had like a paisley. I like that one, and I got that from one of your um, patterns with me, me. That um, and it was like a. a, a Camouflage with the hood. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. That that was that dropped not too long ago. Yeah, I used that one. Yeah, I love um, that pattern too. Yeah, I do. It's yeah. and it's different too because of the sleeve part. I've never done that before. Yeah, it's it's yeah. a fun pattern because it's one of those things. Once you look at your measurements, you can just sew it all the way through and not yeah. have to fit it because of the jacket yeah. for one. And then I like the um detachable hood. Yes, you know what I'm yes. saying with the zipper. Like that was mm -hmm. a good. That was a key. And I actually, and I actually use buttons instead of a zipper. Oh, yeah. okay. So, so you're freaking like, a little bit. All right. Yeah. So that's what I like to do. I like to, you know, I got the basics of the pattern, but I like to put my own spin on it. You know? Okay. Yeah. Um, what what techniques um that was difficult to you, mm -hmm. and that you had to like really work at to like really get it done. You know. Yeah, so it was a couple of them. It was um, <laughs> button up co the collar with the uh, shirt with the collar. Okay. And and I had a tough time aligning the button up at the uh -huh. top with the collar. Yeah. <laughs> so it would kind of be like that. that <laughs> 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 no, you can't. It would kind of be you have, to leave a button. you have to leave my button when it come out like that. <laughs> and I actually, um, I was going to wear this black shirt. Um, what is it? I was wearing a black a black shirt that I made. This is this is one of my pieces here, but I made this black shirt and it had like the regular standard collar and it had huh. button that, that's I think that's the one shirt that I'm proud of that I said I did it right, that I yeah. aligned it correctly. So it's like aligning the, those buttons correctly. Um and also um hemming that um the blind stitch hem. Oh, you you was pull you you was pulling too much and you I was see pulling too much. Yeah, that blind stitch hand was like a killer for me. I was like, how do I do this? So yeah, yeah. But um, other than that, I mean, I, I, I you no know, well pocket. Pretty, so yeah. well pocket was, was a oh, well choice. pocket. Man, come on, <laughs> <laughs> come on. That's, that's one o one. No, yeah, okay. <laughs> no, Got but you. no, but the well pocket. Um, I definitely wanted to get that down. I yeah. definitely because that's that's one thing I noticed that you had liked to do as well. Oh uh, man, or get down. Yeah. Um. Well, not necessarily like to do. You know what I'm saying? Because okay. it, it's it's kind of you have to hold your breath when you start uh, slashing into your fabric. Yeah. But it's just it's just one thing when I started sewing, I just noticed what did I like? What did I like about all the menswear pieces? What do they have in common? Yeah. Um, so I wear a lot of plaid. So like, okay, okay, I have to learn how to match plaid immediately. Yeah. And yeah. for two, all the a lot of the menswear slacks and stuff with welts. You know, so what pockets in the back and all that. So I'm like, man, 
I have to get these down because that's pretty much the majority of everything that I wear, you know? So, yeah. and I, and as soon as I started, you know what I'm saying? I was asking a thousand questions and looking yeah. at all different things and wifey got me right. And I just kept going and perfecting it. And, and yeah. I, I, I love World Pockets now. Yeah. yeah, actually I like World Pockets as well. Um, I made up one shirt. It was a plaid green, um, brown and white shirt. And I put wall pockets everywhere. I put wall pockets on the sleeve, here, here, like everywhere. Because I was like, what, 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 what? Um, but yeah, I, I, I like wall pockets. I love them. And actually, oh. that's what I make for a couple of my clients. I, I make just wall pockets for them. That's for what's up, man. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, are we able to get like a little tour, a little a little sum of uh, your sewing space? Like, uh, you Yeah, I'm actually in my sewing space now. Um, and it was actually in my living room. Okay. But um, back in November, I started having the COVID symptoms. So, um, and, and my mother lives with me, and I didn't want her to get it take, downstairs. So I just yeah. took everything upstairs. Yeah, let, let me see what, what your um. So I have three machines here. So this is the most used one. Um, a brother, Project One Way. I know most of, uh, most of you guys have that. This is my other brother. This is my first machine. Did you still use it? I still use this sometimes. Um, I use this most of the time. And um, this is a Euro Pro. This was given to me, but I really hardly use it. I really don't like the way it flows. Okay. Um, but um, I have a just in case. And, uh, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> right. And I have a, a serger. Nice. A white super lock serger. Um, I love this thing. When I got, I got this maybe like three or four months ago, and I've just been on a roll ever since. So yeah, nice. Got your so this is my, there. yeah, this is my thread here. Um, this is where I keep all of my scissors and, and my pens and markers. Um, this is where I keep, you know, this is where my body oils are. I keep my um, bobbin pins here. Okay. A little box of things. This is. Picture of me and my grandmother when I was like seven months old. Gotcha. Um, and everything I pretty much do is in dedication to her because, um, you know, she, she, she's done a lot for me. And actually, gotcha. it's a quick story. She actually gave me all of her sewing, t sewing tools. Mm, um, in the, really? In the, yeah, in the beginning of when I started to like really climb, um, she passed away 2019 from a... Uh, 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 form of dementia okay so there was a point where she couldn't really talk because uh, a part of the surgery she had affected her speech mm. however um she called me downstairs one day as i was working and she said i want to give you something and she handed me all of her when i tell you this she made this wow. it's almost as old as my mother Oh my goodness! Yeah, so I use this. This is like such a one of those sentimental pieces. Yeah, sentimental you know? pieces. That's amazing, bro. And another thing, this um, jacket here. Ooh. This is actually some old fabric. This is some old jeans that I that I don't wear. Yeah. But the, but the lining is actually her old curtains. Oh wow! Yeah, this is the line in her old curtain. So I keep this here to keep, you know, to keep her with me. That's amazing, yeah, bro. So, yeah. That's like, what I, it's like an African print? Like, what is that? Yeah, it's an African print. Um, and what pattern did you use for that? What is that? I used, I used your pattern. Oh, well, that's what's up. <laughs> yeah, I used your pattern. Your, nice. Um, your, you print um, that. That looks good. Thank you. I used, um, your blazer pattern that has like 10 million pieces to it. So, uh -huh. <laughs> so I use that. All right. So we, we're going to, um, we're going to get into some, some questions, man. Um, mm -hmm. Questions just came up. Um, does, does one create a pattern to sew or does one just draft and sew the masterpiece? So I, I don't quite know, but I, but I will say um, I have created patterns before and I've used pattern pieces um, and when I, when I do drape, I, I, the only process I would drape is when I would almost finish the garment and just see how it looks. Yeah. But I know for, for many designers, especially for women's garments, they right. drape first. 
mm-hmm. and just see how it drapes on the body before they sew. Yeah. But as far as draping, I don't I don't do that until the garment is almost done, so I can just kind of see how it is and see if I need to adjust something. So yeah. okay, well that came from our faces. Um, well, for my me, sister is in here too. Hey, sent. Uh, for me, um, I don't do much draping. Like you said, a lot. Of, I, I think draping is more women's wear, but I know you can drape for men's wear too. And I actually want to do that too, because you can literally see how it's going to look, you know what I'm saying? Just by way of draping and yeah. then pin and cut them out and then make your pattern and stuff. Right. But, um, but yeah, I, other than that, I may, I, I use patterns that I already made. I drop some of my own patterns just by measuring my own self and right. just, just a little bit of everything. Yep. That was a good question. Yep. So we are getting more into the questions. Let me see if anybody have any questions. I know someone had one earlier. Okay, so sewing sensation. Um, when other men know that you made a garment, what are some of your reactions? What are some of their reactions? Oh, yeah. Um, that's what they question. do. What they do. That's a good <laughs> So when um, when I go out or you know when I when I know I'm want to wear something that I made and I'm like I made this and they're like what you made this and that's and that's actually a good conversation starter and that's actually a way for me to get more customers. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, so they're like really surprised. Like, wait, you so? And I'm like, yeah, so. <laughs> That's what's up. Because I, I really I really like breaking down those stereotypes. Yeah. You know, it's just women sew or like a certain type. So no, like an average Joe like me can sew. Like you can sew. It's it's not hard. It's just practice. You know. Nice. Yeah. Art level for life. Um, he didn't have a question, but he said, Man, y'all make a brother want to go um cop a sewing machine. That's what's up. And I and, and it's so, so funny be, and I and, and I'm sorry I didn't take your Sewit Academy class, but I did recommend somebody to it just today. I said go oh, to Academy.com. <laughs> Appreciate you, man. You're not required you're not required to, you know what I'm saying, to go on Sewit oh, Academy, but, but I, it I, is a great resource. It yeah, is great. Yeah, and I and I and I urge anybody who wants to sew to go to Sew Academy and uh, so yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let me see what else we have. Um, oh well, more. Do you, you have any questions for me? I mean, I know I've just been, you know, what I'm saying asking different things and all that good stuff. I know, like, you have some questions for me, brother. Let me see what I can ask. No, <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, you said you moved to, and I, and I know I asked this question kind of off um, before, but um, so why why Atlanta? Why oh, why did we move to Atlanta? Yeah. Well, so I'm I'm from Georgia original oh, okay. yeah south georgia thomasville so like oh, okay. it's like tw- 20 minutes north of Tallahassee, florida so south georgia nowhere near atlanta not the city i'm okay. a country I'm a, I'm a country boy country boy yeah, yeah. so um a, a lot of my family well i got some family in atlanta actually mm-hmm. and wifey uh wanted to come you know what I'm saying to have a space with to open up her on um, the cradle center and melanated fabrics and and all that good stuff too so it's just a little bit of family and business and, and Atlanta is just a great place too. So yeah. um, um, that was, that was the reason why, man. And then the whole COVID hit and it's just perfect timing. And we came and then we just set up shop. That's what's up, man. Yeah. I, I, I really love your story. I love how you came to be. I love how you and your wife came together and worked together. I love that. It's, yeah. it's a perfect, it's a perfect love story. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Appreciate that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> One of my friends asked, um, how and where do you go to find patterns for big and tall men? All right, so um, um, especially with our simplicity patterns, um, there's there's like um, X sizes that goes beyond just your, I guess your your extra large and extra your, large. yeah, but um, depending on what your height is and how big you are, you can have to um, alter that pattern, you know what I'm saying, yeah. a bit. Um, there is a, there's a lengthening and a shortening line on most of your pattern pieces, mm-hmm. you, you will you will cut that and then you will pull Extended. to see how much you make and then you just put paper in between that gap and mm-hmm. then you make it taller. And mm-hmm. then when it comes to making it wider, mm-hmm. you just have to, you have to slash and spread and do stuff like that. Um, a lot of that stuff we teach in Sword Academy, you know what I'm saying? So um, uh, when it comes to big and tall, I'm not sure. Wife, 
Babe, if, if you're watching, I'm not really, I'm not sure what pattern company that might be dedicated to menswear when it comes yeah, so, to being tall. Yeah, so there are um, patterns out there for big and tall men. Um, I can't think of them right now. But my method, because um, one of the things that I want to do is make garments for big and tall men. That's one of the things that I like to, because I'm a tall guy myself. I'm like 6'1", six, 6'2". Six, um, so, so being a tall man you know i know what we go through and i know what bigger guys go through as far as not having the access yeah. to certain stores to they only make them in certain sizes yeah you know so that's why i have i have a couple of um clients who are you know big and tall and and i can't use the you know the regular tracing paper so i would use the tracing paper but i would like grade it out okay. further out you know so right. to to their size and just okay do some, you know, uh, 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 ratios and all of that to, you know, to kind of like compensate for it. So. Okay. Well, we got Julian. Um, What's up, Julian? So, so um, English has patterns in 10X, up to 10X. You see, I knew Julian would have him. Man, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> got the Julie. answers. What's up? Uh, next question from Copyright Brown. How do you, how do we find folks to sew for us? How do we find folks to so for us? I, I, I guess asking, I guess, as it goes social media. Um, uh, well, you're someone that's so for hire, right? I do. So like, what would be the process for someone to reach out to you? Right. So um, I do have uh, a social media, my regular social media, and then I have a business social media, mm -hmm. um, which I will put in here. It's called Greg's Haberdashery. And you can just inbox me. And I have um, clients um, all over, you know, from Texas to New York that actually gives me their measurements. Um, and, I, and I strongly um, urge everybody, every man to know your measurements, to get measured so it can be easier for people if you want, to, if you want clothes made. Um, to get your measurements, and so I can just go from there, and then we'll we'll negotiate, you know, prices or or you know what what have you. JJRO six. Um, that's Joseph. That's my oh, friend that's, Joseph. Oh, that's your boy Joseph. Yeah. Say what's up, man. Shout him out. What's up, Joseph? <laughs> <laughs> so he was like, uh, "What are your ultimate vision for your fashions?" What is my ultimate vision for fashion? That's a good question, man. That's a really good that's question. A, it's, a, it's a good question. It's a little loaded, Joseph. <laughs> but <laughs> I will say um, my style first is kind of like a conservative flair. Okay. Right? I'm not that flashy, um, but I like a pop here or there. Okay. So that's kind of what my, my vision is. I want it to be wearable but not like wearable for just one place. Yeah. You know, I want it to be kind of versatile as far as, you know, it's, it's looks or it's concerned. So that's what I really want. I want something that you can wear, you know, to church or to, you know, to, to your, to the club or, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you went straight from the church to the club. That's what's Come on. Like. <laughs> People do that. People do that. So you might as well just dress them like that. I feel you. I feel you. Don't have to even go home. Just go straight. <laughs> <laughs> from church y'all know y'all do it so yeah that's that's what my um ultimate vision is just try to get uh you know this clothes you can just wear anywhere okay all right i think that's about it that's man y'all y'all came through with the questions let me see someone coming through okay would you rather oh will you either would either of you like um, to one day open your own menswear storefront? Um, that's a good question. Um, I would love to. Um, I tell people I want to be the next Tax Fifth Avenue. Okay. I, that's what I want to do. All right. <laughs> but um, I also had a vision a couple of years ago. Um, I want to actually have a mobile store. Okay. I want to have a mobile store, you know, how people – um pimp out those you know school buses or have yeah. those motor coaches and they just just like one of those food trucks but with both yeah. clothes exactly you pull up get fresh yeah exactly <laughs> yeah because that's that's you know that you don't have to worry about overhead you don't have to worry about yeah. all of that and you can travel because yeah. i think about vending you know i think about 
accessibility as far as you know vending and having all my stuff with me i have to make sure my car is big enough to have all of my stuff in it yeah you know and once i have a mobile store i don't have to worry about that yeah so you kind of do that in a way because you do travel as a vendor you know yeah. what i'm saying but now you yeah. just pull up you know what i'm saying yeah just pull okay, up with my bus in. and be like open the door be like business is here gotcha that's what's yeah. up yeah uh for me um i think i will one day i think i will one day um uh, for now, my mission right now is to get more men involved in this DIY men's fashion space. Absolutely. Um, at first, education, you know what I'm saying? Me being a, an instructor at Sword Academy yeah. and also um, producing more men's wear patterns so we have more resources, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because right now, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit of a struggle if you get in and you think you're just going to go crazy with everything like, like the women. Oh, but yeah, you got, yeah. So it's I want to like bring like me and wife would you want to bring more to the menswear diy fashion space yes. and of course yes like i will i will put out a little small mini collection here and there and yeah so to answer your question yeah to some degree yeah i mean notice it, if, if you need help with anything let a brother know all right for sure man i'm, I'm, I'm around i'm here okay all yeah, right man. all right um is there any more questions i don't i don't want to overlook nobody let me see. Make sure Faith didn't ask no questions because I don't want to miss her question. Let me see. Why I know. Up? I know you did have one question about um, my soul sounds or something. Yeah, what's your soul sounds, yeah. brother? What you listen so, to? What you do? You watching a movie? You so watching the background? I'm gonna, you, I'm gonna show you something. Okay. So I have a portable DVD player right okay. here, and then I have you know my movies over there, um, and it depends on what day. Or what time of day? Because yeah, sometimes yeah. I would just listen to my music, yeah, just jamming my music. Or sometimes I would put on DVD um, to just occupy the time. It just depends yeah. on the day. Okay, you keeping it old school. You got a DVD player up there. I was like, okay, listen, and it's a big one too. <laughs> you ain't streaming nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I have I have my tablet too, though. I have my tablet oh, okay, all right. I put on Netflix movie, but I don't like I don't like watching stuff like brand new that I haven't seen before because I, I it, it needs my attention. Yeah. So yeah. I would like old shows like Mama's Family, Golden Girls. Or oh, you just throw it Martin. in and let it, and to let it go. Yeah, just like let it play. Okay. Yeah. Well, Greg, man, it's been a pleasure, brother. It's hey, been man. really good, man. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. everyone that's tuned in thus far. Um, mm -hmm. This will live on my IG. I, um, Greg will have the footage too as soon as we get off. For him to post it or, or share it, however he see fit, and um, it will also be on YouTube. You know, so I put all these on YouTube, and you can see the whole um, episodes. I think this is the episode like nineteen, I believe. So you have another eighteen to go look at if you want to, man. So um, and you have some, you have some great guests in the past. Great man, appreciate guests. it, awesome man. Yeah. Um, is, is there anything else that you want to close with that you want to um, link it, link anybody to anything that you're promoting, anything you have coming up, any dates or any Vendor pull ups. You want people to come come check you out at? Well, I'm I'm kind of on the vacation right now. Okay. Um, but um, tell, tell, tell everybody where you got vacation so they can start putting um, their orders in. <laughs> right. So I'm I'm actually taking almost the whole month of April off. Okay. <laughs> to go back. So to that's why I, you know I actually buy ATL and I'm going to it. Uh, you know to Miami, a couple other places. Yeah. But um. I have my business social media again, which is Greg's Haberdashery. Um, my website Excellent. is Greg's Haberdashery Store okay. dot com. Greg's okay. Haberdashery Store dot com. Mm -hmm. um, I only sell a portion of my products. Okay. I don't sell everything. I don't. Even, I don't even sell my clothing because most of it is one of a kind. Got you. And sometimes when you buy fabric. Sometimes you buy like the last three yards and the last four yards of it. And you can't, you know, find a You can't get that no more. Right. right. <laughs> so, um, I, you know, I do sell a portion of my products on there. Um, uh, other than that, yeah. I mean, you, you, you can hit me on my regular social media if you want, you know, custom clothing or whatever. So, and then just, and you can see, just see what I offer. So, okay. All right, Greg. Appreciate you so much. Appreciate you, man. Um, once again, everyone, thank you for joining in to another episode of Dope Men So, and we will see you in the next one. All right? Holla, holla. Holla. Right.